number two had the car for six days and wrecked it. So the car sat until we found the car. It was actually listed on Facebook Marketplace of all places. The lights that we have down here are from a 2020 Mustang GT. The actual headlights for the car are from a tractor trailer. <laughs> What's up, TRC fans? Don't miss our annual Street Kings event at its new location, Bradington Motorsports Park, on December 11th. My name is Austin, and this is a 2012 Audi R8 GT. So the engine is the, the entire uh, engine. The full build on the car, the turbo setup, is underground racing. Um, it was built some time ago now. Based on what we know, it was somewhere in the 2014, 2015 timeframe that it was built. It is a 2R plus package based on what we know and what they've given us as far as the potential power levels for the car. This car has a bunch of different settings for a bunch of different power levels. The clutch that's in it right now is the, the street clutch. So the car is turned down from what it potentially could make max power wise, which from what we've been told is somewhere in the 21 to 2200 horsepower range. The car as it's sitting right now makes somewhere north of 1500 on VP import. On pump gas, the car makes about a thousand. So this is a Artronic transmission. It is a factory casing. It's a fully built trans from Underground Racing. So it has pretty much every one of their billet internal upgrades. Um, really, it's a completely gone through top to bottom upgraded transmission. I think the only thing that's just about left is the actual casing from the factory. Everything else is billet internals on it, as well as the front diff. The front diff is a fully upgraded billet front diff. So we have run the car at Pocono, which is a third of a mile roll race. Those are the only events that it's been to. This car, because it's an Artronic, is, I guess, a little bit of a unique breed. This car doesn't actually have the ability, as it's set up right now, to launch the car. Essentially, the way that it's set up from the factory, actually, when you hit the brake, it disengages the clutches in the trans. So you can't, you can't even foot brake it on the line for like a quarter mile. So if you were to run it at the quarter mile, you would just be going off idle, which honestly, depending on how the event shakes out, we may, you know, if we get eliminated early in the roll race type stuff and they'll let us, I would love to see what it'll do. Um, Cause as fast as these DCT cars are going, this car has the power to still, I think, get into the eights. It would be a real high eight, but no launch whatsoever to do that, I think would be pretty cool to see. So on setting two, the fastest the car has been is 184. So we're really, Looking forward to getting it down to, to some warmer temperatures with the car turned all the way up and see what it can do closer to full tilt.
doesn't it doesn't have all the panels it doesn't have the doors but the interior has all the sun panels inside which i i think i find really cool that you kept it all yeah i think the only thing we took out was the the headliner and uh we probably should have just left it in originally we were planning on taking more of the interior out than what you see here and we might eventually we might go into the weight removal a little bit more because right now aside from the body panels there really isn't any weight removal on it it still has carpet like it has a radio so eventually we might do more with that but for the time being there's really no reason not to right as my brakes are super squeaky <laughs> yeah so it's boost by gear so on this setting in second you get 18 pounds third you get 25 so that's why third feels yeah, that felt night and day different because it's throwing a lot more power. Yeah, you probably go from, I mean, the car probably makes, I don't know, roughly call it 12 on in second. And then the second you hit third, you probably jump up to at least 1400 horsepower, if not 15 at that point. Mm -hmm. It gives you most of it. And then fourth on setting four throws more boost at it. And that's when you get full tilt. Yeah. And, side of the car you were telling me how this car has a lot of different components from different cars can you walk me through some of those things that are on this car correct so the as far as the aesthetics go with us working on the cars that we work on that we take them apart for least see parts we had certain parts of this car that kind of just fell into our lap um, the front splitter for example is actually just an off-the-shelf APR carbon front splitter we knew that the front end profile on an S2000 is actually relatively similar shape, not necessarily dimensions, but just shape to an Audi R8. It has a similar profile. So in order to kind of give Josh at JCH Weld Fab a starting point, we bought a splitter. He knew then kind of the overall shape that he was going with. The lights that we have down here are from a 2020 Mustang GT. We, again, we kind of knew the shape that we were going for, and because we take a lot of those cars apart, we knew that the profile was right about what we needed, and really all we had to do was just fabricate the mount points. So it is just literally an OEM housing, Ford Mustang, turn signal, and uh, fog light, you know, combination light. The actual headlights for the car are from a tractor trailer. Yeah. Um, if you get on and search, you can find them. You'll probably see them driving down the highway. Uh, and what's nice about that is that it's a full DOT sealed housing. It is a road legal headlight, which is what we were trying to do with the car. We wanted it as kind of extreme as it is. We wanted it to be road legal to the best of our abilities. So with lighting, we specifically focused on actual sealed housing. Uh, the taillights on the back are trailer taillights. Again, by the letter of the law for the Let's road, back there and they, are, yeah. they are good to go for being able to be run on something on public streets. So you're the temperature right here. As you're saying, road legal, which is road, road, road legal. It is. It is by the letter of the law. It has. It actually has more side view mirrors than are required. You're really only 
needed to have one side view mirror on it, which the side view mirrors are from an S2000 also. The uh, bases were similar bolt dimension to existing bolts on the car already. So we were trying to match that up. It ended up not working and we had to drill holes, but <laughs> that was kind of why we went with them off the, off the bat, but they're just, they're an off the shelf part for an S2000. So it was kind of just a nice little transition. The, uh, the uh, fenders here, these are actually, we, we, we want to redo these in carbon fiber. These are actually steel. They are for a, a chopper, a hot rod, like uh, a, a, yeah. a motorcycle. That was the only starting point that we had. We had to fabricate, or Josh, excuse me, Josh at JCH Weld Fab had to fabricate the brackets and then also weld tabs onto the aluminum control arms. But that was the only starting point that I could give him. I just had to measure the tire, get the right width. Those ones are 13 inch wide. Wow. which is it's big i think that's maybe the biggest like off the shelf for the the choppers that you can yeah, get that's big for, uh, and then yeah after that too. you have to extend them on your own but uh that we were lucky because it worked out great and we did have front fenders on the car at some point and we ended up taking them off because it kind of had the body covering it in any way so because of the weight until we can get them made out of carbon fiber we didn't want that much weight on it so we did end up taking those off can you walk me through what you've done with the cooling system on this car sure Sure. So we, we, I'll start with the, a little bit more about the chassis before we dive into the cooling system, because basically what you see here is, is what the chassis gave us. This right here is all OEM Audi from their back. Mm. So this is where the damage was from there forward. We essentially had mounting points that already existed. That is just how the frame was built from Audi. We kind of knew what our overall dimensions were going to be. These cars have three radiators from the factory. So it's actually kind of like a daisy chain setup because normally you have a trunk right here. You have to have somewhere to put your stuff. Right. So they can't put one big radiator. So it actually comes in, it feeds over to this side and then over to this side. And then the outlets of them jump to a little bit larger middle radiator and then goes back to go back to the engine. So because we didn't have those space constraints, we knew that we wanted to just fit as large of a radiator as possible into that main opening because this car has a power steering cooler and it also has a separate cooler that is for the ice box system for the turbos. With us not having to worry about a trunk or somewhere to put golf clubs, it made it a whole lot easier to put as big of a radiator into this as possible. And all it is, is just an off the shelf core that Josh custom made the end tanks and the piping. And for us, luckily it has worked out great. So the, the wheels on the car are OEM Audi wheels. Um, these are the ones that, that came on the car uh, with the GT package. Because it's a GT package, it does have the carbon ceramic brakes, which I can't say I can say 100%, but I think in the Gen 1s, I think the only cars that had the carbon ceramics were the GT package cars. Um, the tires are just Toyo or 888Rs. These cars have a unique combination with the all-wheel drive and the tire sizing. The rears are really large. The fronts are actually pretty small. I believe they're 235. So, which is, is there's only so many companies that make a really, really sticky tire in a 235. And when we got the car, it had the Toyo uh, R888Rs uh, on it. So we just continued to go with that. And they've honestly been really, really good for a car of this power level. The front axles are the factory Audi, the rears are billet that Underground put in the car when they were doing the build on it. So the car was originally built for, we'll just call him owner, owner number one, um, back in 2014. He had bought the car brand new, the cars are 2012. The car was built sometime in 2014 and was then sold. Owner number two had the car for six days and wrecked it. So the car sat until we found the car. It was actually listed on Facebook Marketplace of all places. And that would have been in early 2021. So early this year. The listing was actually put up by, I guess, a friend that worked at the body shop where the car had been sitting. Being that our business is taking apart wrecked performance cars, it piqued our interest from a parts value side of things. Then we kind of came to the conclusion as we continued digging and finding out more about the car, finding out what the car actually had from a package perspective, because this package is very different than say a stage two package for underground racing. The more we found out about the car, the more we realized that even if the car wasn't fixable, 
that the parts value was there for us to try and buy it. And from the get-go though, even though we constantly take apart cars, this car was kind of purchased always as a car we wanted to fix. The idea of doing a, a go-kart was there from square one. And the fallback was if it wasn't fixable, if it had some sort of major frame damage, then we would just sell all the parts off of it like we normally do. So it really fit us perfectly. We were kind of the perfect person to buy this car. So we got the car back here and really started diving into it. I'll call it, we'll call it right at the beginning of May. And the first event that we took the car to was right at the beginning of August. So that's what, June, May, June, July. So three months, roughly, that the, the build took. And that was us taking the parts off of it that we knew we weren't gonna use, that we wanted to sell from it. Um, there was any number of different kind of uh, custom things, the front end, the door bars, that was something that we had uh, a good friend of ours, um, Josh, uh, JCH Weldfab up in Northeast Maryland that has been, I mean, we've known him for more than a decade now, back when we all had, you know, very entry level performance cars and he's been doing fabrication and he's fine tuned his craft. So we knew he was the guy to do the custom work on it. Even though he doesn't do a lot of chassis work, he specializes in, uh, you know, building turbo kits, exhausts, um, all that type of stuff. But we knew we wanted him to do that. And then there was any number of other little side projects that we had to do. Um, the roll bar was purchased from GMG Racing out in California. It's a bolt-in bar. We were able to get, get it in a custom powder-coated color. But from there, we had to get the bar because we knew we wanted to run harnesses in the car versus running just a factory style seat belt. Um, we knew that we wanted to put a set of racing seats in it. And the, the Sportsters we've used in the past on other projects, but they, at the time we were building this car, was very, very difficult to find. So we ended up picking up a set of those, but then we had to make the seat brackets that'll fit onto it because all of us are relatively tall. So we were trying to make it so you could fit in the car with a helmet. So there were any number of little smaller projects that were worked in there around the big project of getting the front end refabricated on the car in order to mount a radiator and then also have some structural stuff up there. The goal from when we first ran it, it's, it's a promotional vehicle for our business, Lee C Parts, and then as well as our, our YouTube channel, Scrap Life Garage. That was the original plan with it. And when we first ran it on pump gas, the first event we took it to, it ran right about 170 miles, miles an hour. And we knew that it had several more horsepower on tap. And essentially driving home from that event, we said, we want to get the car to 200. We know that it has the power to do it, even with the aerodynamic um, hindrances that it has. We know it has the power to do it. It's just a matter of if it can do it on the clutch that it's on right now, or if it's going to need another clutch to really bump the horsepower up to get over that aerodynamic wall. All right, guys, that'll do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Recently, we've released some new merch on the website, hoodies, sweatshirts for the holidays with a lot of cool different designs. If you guys want to check that out, it's on thatracingchannel.com. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.